and welcome welcome to the call today guys um it's, uh, i'm excited to have alex back from playing with fire and uh why i'm excited to have alex back is because of a question i'm constantly getting from you guys especially in the workshops but often online is you're always asking me uh what do i text her what do i write here they'll hand me your phone and say what do i say back to this girl what do i say back to that girl and a lot of times you've already written a lot and there's a lot of stuff going on there and uh, I particularly wanted to have Alex come on. Uh, last time we talked about specifically online, but today we're going to be talking and doing specific examples of text, what he's so good at on his channel. You see him break these texts down, and you can see exactly why the communication went off when he does that. You can see exactly why the guy's having trouble. And you can see exactly how much control you have over this if you actually master the skill set, and that's what his expertise is. So today we're going to bring up some conversations from some of our clients, some of his clients. You get to see some people do it bad. You get to see some people do it right. And we get to learn a few things. And um, and I'm excited to have him back. He's going to be at the Integrated Man Summit coming up here in Miami, November uh, 3rd through the 4th. And uh, since it's his hometown, Miami, or the town he lives in now, that is. And so we'll be glad to have him out uh, breaking this down further. So uh, I highly recommend you pay attention because you guys ask me this question all the t these questions all the time. So we're here answering it for you. Welcome to the call, Alex. How are you? Awesome, man. Yeah, thank you for having me back. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it's uh, it's great to have you, man. You, you you brought a lot of value last time. You always do. You brought a lot, bring a lot of authenticity, and you actually care about this stuff. And I can tell, and you're actually good at it. And I can tell about that. I can tell that too. Um, you're not just pretending to make money. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm like ninety percent of the industry. Yes, yes, very true. Um, so let's, uh, let's dive in. Um, you, uh, I, I've, I've noticed you, one of the questions I have is that you, uh, you seem to market your product mostly like Tinder and Bumble, but your product is really, really has a lot to do with texting in general. And that's where I see a lot of value for my guys is they, they get girls numbers and then they don't know what to do. They freak out and they, and they go in their heads and they start thinking. Yeah. And I see them text from that worrying place and that anxiety ridden place. That's when they text the worst shit too. And uh, then you look at it and it's like, oops, what'd you, why'd you send that? You know, and that question comes up. So, um, so I wanted everybody to know you're not just online dating. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're whole, uh, you're really about communication. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, sometimes guys think that there's this huge difference between texting a online girl and texting a cold approach girl, but there's really not There's small, subtle differences. Uh, like for example, you know, you have like inside jokes you could use if you met the girl in real life. Uh, you don't have to do as much over text if you know, she's already invested, but it's like good, good text game is good text game. There's not even if you met the girl from social circles, still pretty much all the same rules apply. So there's a lot, of, there's a huge amount of overlap. And see if you agree with me on this. If if the guy's got a lot of investment, he's met a girl in person, everything's going solid. You don't have to get too creative. Your text can be pretty simple, but uh, where you have to have some skill is when the girl is kind of not sure. She's a little distant, pulling away, and that's where I see some of your skill set can really get them reinvested again, get them excited again, get them moving again. Would you agree with me on that? Yeah, definitely. So if you kind of break it down, you can put chicks uh, very much like, you know, overgeneralizing into three categories. One is the interested category. So this is the girl who maybe you met from cold approach or she found your pictures really attractive and she, she really wants to meet you. At that point, it's just a matter of not fucking it up and just moving things towards the meetup, which even though it sounds super simple, most guys will still fuck it up, even when the girl's really interested. I've seen examples of this time and time again. The second category is the girl who's not interested at all. Like maybe she just gave you her number because she just whatever, like she wanted to be nice. No amount of text game is going to turn it around. That's like a misconception that you can take a girl who's not in most of the time. There's exceptions. Or maybe like, you know, she just has a fight with her boyfriend. And like there's weird one-off scenarios, but most of the time, you're not going to make that girl interested no matter how good your texting is. And then, of course, there's all the girls in the middle, the maybe girls. They're somewhat interested. You know, they're, they're open to the idea of meeting you, but they're not quite sold yet. You know, you're not their number one priority. You're not even their number two priority. But they do have that general interest. And that's really where the value of good texting skills comes in. Yeah, I would I would agree. The um, And that's that's literally what I want some of my guys to get. That's why I keep encouraging them to look at your videos, look at your stuff and uh take it in are you ready to dive in and check some yeah. of these uh these texts out yeah, let's do it. okay we're gonna bring uh george or cairo cairo, cairo. we're gonna have <laughs> he jump in I still get, I, <laughs> he has more than one name he, but I, he screws with me so uh so cairo let's dive in and uh uh let's see what we got here okay yeah, purchase this girls. Is, uh, so yes it's gonna be the, the context he gave us and then we'll follow up with uh with the text uh he had with the girl 
Okay. Approached this girl. She was visiting LA with friends. We went on a date. Okay. So this must be after the first date. Is what he say? I was assuming an insta date, or this is they just did they actually uh, go on a date. He got her number. He got her number, and then was trying to get her out to to meet up with him. Awesome. Okay. Um, do you want me to read these, or do you want to read them, George? Or, or yeah, let's, let's. Could we zoom in on that a tad more? Or I, I mean, I guess it's fine. Yeah. Just kind of. I think you can zoom in. I can. Uh, I can read it out loud if you want to. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. We can, let's do that. Okay. So, hi. He writes, "Hi, whatever the name is, we got it blacked out." Welcome to LA. I hope you have a. Uh, I hope you have a great time here. There's tons of cool places here, and I'd like to show you some of my favorite to see. Let me know when you're going to the bungalow so we can plan to hang out. And then he puts his name. Yeah. So um, should should, we, should I just comment as we go along, or do we just yeah? I'd say just jump in. Okay. Yeah, I think that might be easier because if I do it all at once at the end, it might be like too much, uh, too fast. So the, I have a problem with this first text. Um, it he's not he's like kind of acting like he's her tour guide or something like that or like her host. You know, like she's she like you know she's couch surfing and he's her host. Like, oh, welcome to the city. Uh, and the, yeah, this is just way too formal and like there's tons of cool places here I'd like to show you and some of my favorites to you. Why? Like because you want to impress the girl. That's really the only reason, right? There's no it's not because you're just doing it out of the goodness of your heart, right? She's a random stranger to you. Uh so yeah, I mean like this whole text could be so much simpler. Uh it could just literally be saying uh his name, um, you know, hey, uh good running into you together. Uh we should grab drink something. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go for the soft close. Yes, but I would say uh, still hitting up the bungalow this weekend. Like simple as that, or even just his name. Like this. This is way too long and way too uh, overly nice. Now, what I've noticed from you is you typically only do like one or two lines. You know, not too much with the first text. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I just I, I always believe that the more simple you can make it. Every time you add complexity to your texting you're adding a chance for things to go downhill. So the, the, you want to just keep things as simple as you can get away with and only add complexity yeah. when necessary. The example I always use is if you take a look at Google, you know, when there was a search engine war, there was Yahoo, there was all the Alta Vista. They're all like fancier, right? But Google won basically because one of the big reasons <clears throat> I think is because they were the most simple. That's in yeah. my opinion. You know, so I think the same thing applies to texting. You just want to be the most simple, get simple as you need. Like Apple is too. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, he put himself in the tour guide frame instead of the uh, potential. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see what you're talking about there. Okay, uh, and then she writes back hi, and she's kind of doing the same stuff. A lot of a lot of texting here. Hi, and she writes his name. Thanks for the warm welcome with a little. I think that's a smiley face. My friends are arriving today, so I should have a better idea of what the reunion plans are by tonight, so we can coordinate bungalow. As of now, I think the plan for tonight is Abbott Kinney first Fridays. If that's something you might be interested in, first Fridays are like a, I think a food truck night, and then and then uh, good morning, and he writes back good morning uh, with a smiley face or a winky face. I think it's a smiley face. I was uh, I was meeting with a client. Abbott Kinney is awesome. I like going there, but I don't know if I'll be able to make it. To be honest, tomorrow during the day would work better. We can meet up where we first met. I have an awesome idea. Yeah. So. Um, this is, I would call this improper closing. So she has to agree not only to meet him, but she has to agree to meet him tomorrow during the day. And she has to agree to meet him at that same spot. So there's three things she has to agree to in one text, in one text, What you want to do is small chunk compliance as much as possible. So the first thing I would do is get her to agree to something general. So let's assume we're going for the close right now. Like, let's say, um, he sent that first text. She responded. Now I'm taking over his texting, right? As of now, I think the plan for tonight is to have a kidney first. Uh, Fridays, that's something you might be interested in. I would have said something like, I'm assuming he's busy. Well, first of all, I would never go and hang out with her and her friends, right? You want to hang out with a girl one on one. Uh, but I would say, um, unfortunately, um, I already have plans tonight, right? Um, how about Saturday? Or, um, yeah, like what's her schedule like for the rest of the weekend, right? Try to figure out what her schedule is like. Um, or you can say something like, oh, I already have plans tonight, but we should get together Saturday or Sunday, right? So all she has to do at that point is either agree to the general idea of hanging out with you or tell you her schedule. She doesn't have to agree to multiple things in one text.
Can you can you hear me still? Or did I lose you? I think I hit my mute button there. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt you. I noticed in the, uh, also the other thing I'm noticing is because he wrote so technical in the first text, like a business meeting or something or a tour guide that she wrote back in the same format. Like she was talking uh -huh. to her tour guide. And so, she, so she's, she's going into his frame and so he's screwing himself there. And then, uh, and then he's continuing it down there. Like you said, he could have just kept it simple, but he's continuing it. Which, which will make, which will commonly happen. Girls will kind of, you know, take the lead quite often unless your frame is like super opposing to hers like let's say she's an innocent christian you know whatever like religious girl and you're like yeah daddy's gonna destroy that but you know like if it's too out of her scope then she won't but generally speaking girls will fall into the guy's frame so it's kind of like you almost want to think of it as like putty right it's you can mold it a little bit and also just one thing to keep in mind let's say he does get the date right with the frame that's set him actually hooking up with a girl sleeping with a girl or even like getting her in any romantic fashion is going to be an uphill battle right because yeah. he's the tool guy frame so quite often when girls accuse a guy of being creepy it's not that the guy was too sexual it's that he she did, had no idea he was going to be sexual so the guy made it seem like the whole thing was like platonic and then he came out to her and the girl's like well this guy's a creep but it's rare that a guy who's like sexual you know from the start gets accused of being a creep unless he does something like totally outrageous so it has less to do with the actual you know the sexuality and much more to do with the surprise and the the fact that she it was unexpected that it was incongruent i think creep is a good word for it. you were very incongruent yeah, that, that makes perfect sense, especially in this context. Um, okay, I'll read the next part. It's These are long, and they, you feel, guys, guys, notice even when I read it, it feels like, uh, work, okay? And so notice that that's not because of the, con that's because of the text conversation we're reading. If the text conversation was fun and flirty, we'd be laughing more and having a good time. Um, I really appreciate the invite, but honestly, I'm kind of at the mercy of whatever my gang of friends wants to do. We're here from all over for a reunion, so I want to make sure I make the most of my time with them, but would love for you to meet up with us at the bungalow or whenever, it, uh, whenever if that ends up working for you. And then he writes back, you really made an impression on me, so let me know what time you guys are going to be here. Yeah, so I'm not... I'm not the biggest fan of you really made an impression on me. I'm definitely not one of those coaches who says, oh, you can't compliment girls. No, you can compliment girls. But this just feels like a little like he's just overly sold. He's overly impressed. Like you really made an impression on him. Like, really? Like, uh, you know, a much better way to phrase that would be like, well, you seem pretty cool. So I'd like to catch you, you know, while you're in L.A., right? Like something, you know, you can still give a girl a compliment, but it has like I don't know, it has to be within re reason, right? Like this might be a text I would send to. I don't even know if I would send this to my girlfriend. Honestly, like, baby, you really <laughs> had a question on me last night. I don't know. So this is this is just too much. The second thing is, is again, it's all very logical. Like, there's plenty of you know opportunities here to throw in some humor and some flirting. So, for example, when she says, uh, "I'm at the mercy of whatever my gang of friends wants to do," uh, you know, you can easily riff off that. Uh, I would say, don't worry. I talked to a gang of friends. They said they're all down with, uh, you know uh like <laughs> giving you the night off and leaving you in my hands or something like that or like don't worry uh uh or uh don't worry i'll be like something like maybe like oh um what if your gang of friends wants to uh you know like have no words i don't know like so i would need to think about it for, for a second but there's a lot of opportunities there for humor uh with the whole gang of friends thing and it sounds uh, like it needs the humor it desperately needs a drink of water this text conversation yeah, for sure. Another, the last thing I don't like is that it's him falling into her plan. So I don't like anything that involves you um, basically tagging along for, with a girl. It's much better when it's the other way around. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And then it looks like, uh, I don't know if this is the end of the text, but I'm guessing she put a little smile, will do. I don't think you ever heard from her. And then he wrote, hey, said her name? I'm about to head to the bungalow. Are you going to uh, be there? And uh, is that the end of it, Cairo? No, it goes more like two. Yeah, so conversation wanna, really trying to get her out. Uh, yeah, it seems to me like this is a long one of a lot of. Let's see if there's. A, do you see anything in here, Alex? You want to comment on instead of us just reading this whole thing and boring the audience? Uh, yeah, sure. So, so I'll, I'll just go through. Hi, we're just staying in tonight, playing games, sort of being so unpredictable this weekend. Do you know what you're up to tomorrow? Uh, you're being very unpredictable, just like a good lawyer should. Lol. Uh, he's he's rewarding. I guess somewhat negative behavior. Sorry for being so unpredictable this weekend. Um, I would have said, um, I'll let it slide this time. 
Uh, I mean, if he wants to go like high risk, high reward, he would say, I'll let it slide this time, but next time I might have to spank you a little. But that wouldn't really make too much sense because the conversation was so platonic. The problem is because it's so platonic, he can't use a lot of the more flirty text that I personally like to use. So the transition, you know, has to be more gentle, I guess. So maybe something like, sorry, sorry for being so unpredictable this weekend. It'd be like, uh, I'll let it slide this time. Uh, uh, but you can make it up to me over a drink or something like that, you know, uh, not, but you don't want to reward that, uh, just like a good Lord should love. Like what doesn't even make sense. Why should a good Lord be unpredictable? I, I don't even understand his logic. Hmm, I was about, I was thinking about, uh, going for a drive down PCH and down to Panga. I love that drive. Join me. It kind of seems like a hail Mary, um, a little bit. Haha. I would love to, but can't really break with my friends. For example, they're leaving tomorrow. We're going on a little hike. If you're interested in joining, or may still be around Tuesday for a bit after they leave. I mean, his best chance is definitely catching her while, even if she legitimately likes him, uh, it's kind of hard to get a girl who's in town just to see her friends to break away unless it's like, you know, she's really into you. Um, so he says, I feel like there's a part of you that's avoiding me, and I get that. I'm, I mean, yeah, no, I don't think there's any part of her that's avoiding him. She's just, I mean, she's just busy with her friends. I also feel nervous about meeting up with you. I don't know why he would ever say that. Tuesday works better for me. How about 11 a.m.? Same place where I first met you. Should work perfectly. I'm actually surprised she agreed to that. Uh, I'm assuming she's probably going to flake. But Tuesday, 11 a.m., same place. Should work perfectly. Looking forward to seeing you then. Yeah. Again, so how I would have she said, um, I would have said, it's cool. Uh, yeah, let's do Tuesday. Um we can, uh, you know, there's no need to say that whole thing about, you know, avoiding or being nervous or whatever. Um, so when she said, oh, I still may be around Tuesday for after they leave, be like, cool, let's do Tuesday. Uh, or do you or do you think you can get away from your friends for a few hours? Or, um, you know, I might kind of try that. But, you know, it, just from my experience, sometimes, you know, the girl, like when the girls are with their friends, they're just more concerned about that unless there's a strong impression. All right, how was your hike? Did you enjoy it? Any good picks? Well, yeah, I would never send that text. Like, why does it matter? Uh, yeah, just way too friendly, way too platonic. Um, she says, Tuesday, 11 ma'am, same place, should work. Right? Uh, how was your day? I have a confession to make. I don't really like that hike because I'm too long. Who gives a shit? I'm a lazy person when it comes to walking. That's like, why would you say that? My day was okay. I had a meeting with a client. I was working some marketing stuff with them, but it felt short. I'm about to grab some dinner. Okay, how was your day? Literally, this could just be something like, it was good. Just finished a big workout, looking nice and fit for our date. Bam, so much better. Or if he wants to say it was good, uh, you know, uh, whatever, did this something that's like somewhat interesting, you know, uh, you know, had a okay, like he wants to keep it fully authentic. It was good. Had a big day. I work with clients and whatnot. About to reward myself with some tasty dinner. That's it. Keep things simple. Uh, you know, no yeah, because marketing about. stuff sounds boring. I mean, it doesn't sound like anything exciting. Nothing that there's nothing interesting about that, right? And that's, that's what you're basically saying with that is say something that at least sounds like you had an interesting day or there's something interesting we can talk about so we can interesting relate to. Right. But also he's just talking about shit that like no one cares about. Like no one cares yep. if you don't like that hike. No one cares that you're a lazy person that what well, I don't even know if that why that's that's like almost DLV you know, display of lower value. Like you're lazy. Haha. Fair enough. I'm okay with walking, but you will never see me running. Enjoy dinner. Looking forward to tomorrow. Me too. I'm surprised he's getting this good of a reaction. Okay. Uh, me too. Have a good night. Morning. I'm mobilizing my true Miami, fa Miami fashion. <laughs> Maybe delayed a few minutes. Uh, the weather was gorgeous. Okay. Let's see what happens next. Looks like they did go on the hike. I'm guessing that's what that picture oh, is. Yeah. Well, a little bit too. Time. I grew up tired, but damn, that's tomorrow. I have, have a great, I had a great time with you. Have a flight back. I mean, I would bet like any amount of money that it was like purely platonic. Uh, but I would be curious if I'm wrong, then, you know, I'm wrong. But to me, it just seems like very platonic. I'm not a great photographer, but damn, that smile. Like, I would bet they just met up, they did a hike, uh, and that was the extent of it. Yeah, that would be my guess, too. Um, they must have had a good first impression when he met. That's the only thing I think it held this thing together. For so. sure. Yeah, for sure. It definitely has to be that. If it was an like, online number, this, chances are this would have bombed out earlier. But, yeah, definitely there was a positive impression um, for sure. Hey, Cairo, is this our mutual friend? Yes. Is this our, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. I'm sure I'll hear from him later. <laughs> so awesome. He needed to see that. Good. Right, should we go to the next one or? Yeah, uh, let's, let's do it. All right, this one is, um, well, I'll explain on the screen because he thought that the girl was interested in It's short. Uh, 
There's a girl from work who I thought was interested in me sexually. Yeah, that always gets a little dicey, you know, because you don't want to like lose your job. Yeah, I agree. So you gotta be like extra cautious. Hey, especially in today's in today's climate, man, that's so true. Yeah, I think a big part of it is how much you care about that career. If it's just like a summer job or something you don't really care about, it's temporary, then you can whatever, go for it. But if it's like you see yourself at that company, you're trying to like rise up the ranks, then you want to be very cautious. Uh, all it takes is like one incident. Her, okay. or, can we zoom in on this a tad? Uh, can't zoom in any more than this right now. Okay, yeah. let me just... I got my ugly cheap up. dime store glasses so I can see it. Uh, oh, there we go. I was able to full scribe it. Do you want to read it or should I read it? Is this one's short. Right, if you if you want me to read it, I give it a shot. If it doesn't sound good, we'll, we'll switch it from there. He, he writes, uh, hey, Urban Girl. I don't think we know this guy. Hey, Urban Girl, still ordering food at 2 a.m. Uh, to get going. Uh, uh, do, do, do. And then she wrote, oh, hi, ex-colleague. So they must have worked together, like he said. And then he wrote, you noticed. Okay, you read it. You go for it. And then I'll just comment on things because it's better because cool. I think you got to – it's easier if they, if we just stick with you. Cool. Yeah, I did. What else you got going on in your life besides noticing charming men? Uh, yeah, just uh, fine so far, but stop using so many smiley faces. If you look at the first three texts, uh, four texts, there's a smiley face in every single one of them, right? So whenever you send a lot of emojis, it just comes off feminine. As I'm kind of going through the rest, skimming through, he uses a lot of emojis. It takes away from the sexual tension of the text. Um, uh, so that text would have been so much better if you said, what else you got going on besides noticing charming men like you know uh that's just better without the you know the emoji more sexual tension but okay i wish these charming men were so lucky that i noticed them it would it wouldn't be luck if you're already charmed but anyways what's new with you nothing i don't like really anything where you're like uh where you're like trying to get get to know the girl over text uh, like what's new with you it's like a very general question it's like what do you like to do for fun Usually when you ask overly general questions, you actually get short answers because the girl doesn't know how to answer it. So she gives you a short version of an answer. Whereas if you ask a more concrete question, you get a more broad answer. It's kind of like uh, ironic in a way. Uh, well, anyways, what's new with you? Nothing new as much. Uh, uh, UKW, Thursday at 9 a.m. You and I should go out. Well, why 9 a.m.? I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah, I thought <laughs> that was like, weird too when I read it. But yeah, she's like... Thir go ahead. I was just if you back up just a little bit before we go to that. Uh, LOA, what's new? LOL, what's new with you? What's instead of a general question, what's a question you would use there? Well, I'll probably do something callback. So they used to work together. So probably something referencing to that. Um, I would have, you know, that, that's usually the best. So I don't know what their context of their, you know, dynamic was. But even if he someone knows her or even if they barely knew each other, it was just like someone who was in the same whatever office space. You could reference something about the company or something that's like inside to you know youtube something contextual what is always a lot better um but if you can't literally can't think of anything and he wants to go with something general i might say something um like i don't know what's new with you eh, a better way to say that would be um uh got you know um got any big plans for this weekend or something like that at least that's like a little bit more concrete and then when she says and then she might say something like oh no not too much i'd be like cool, well, we should change that. And then you can segue to the close. Or if she says, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to be working all weekend, you can say something like, sounds like you can use a little stress relief. So I kind of like to think of it as chess. I always like to think a move or two ahead. And then I'm like, okay, how I'm going to say this to get this kind of response, which will allow me to say this. I like uh, that. So, yeah, but yeah, I think a real issue comes in when he says Thursday, 9 a.m., you and I should go out. First of all, 9 a.m., like who the fuck goes out at 9 a.m.? Uh, it's so random. Uh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have a real reason for that. Like, why we're going to a special event, something like that that we both like. You know, just yeah, super random right. just to throw that out. But also, again, just poor closing. So a lot of guys they tend to just like they they, they close like kind of like blindly throwing darts at dartboard, and sometimes you can still hit if your eyes are closed, right? But it's much better if you just first soft close. So she says nothing new as such. I'd be like, I've been like, sounds exciting. Anyways, we should get together for a drink sometime soon. Right. So sounds exciting is kind of my way of like playfully teasing her. And then, um, you know, we should get together. That's the soft close. Right. So at that point, yeah. she doesn't have to agree to a particular date. All she has to do is to agree to the general idea of hanging out. It's like, for example, uh, let's say, you know, I'm trying to you know, let's let's say I'm trying to get on your podcast. 
uh, it's going to be, you're going to be more likely to agree if I say, yo, Brian, we should do a collaboration sometime soon. If I'm like, yo, Brian, we should do a collaboration Thursday at 9 a.m. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be like, uh, dude, I'm busy then. Even if you do legitimately want to, you know, work with me. So it's the same kind of principle. So I don't like to set myself up for no's, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like he's entering negative compliance, negative compliance. So she says, hey, that's okay. We'll talk soon. Like, he's just kind of giving it. That's also kind of random. Tomorrow, Thursday, 9 a.m., I don't even wake up. Uh, it's yeah, kind of hard to talk And then he just checks out right after that. Yeah, Boom. yeah, yeah. Okay, he, what does, is, what he does it again. You're gonna see him do it again, guys, and uh, it's very interesting. It's like it's like he feels rejected and runs away. That's the feeling I get. Um, oh, by okay. the way, we're gonna we're gonna give an example of a more successful one that Alex has got here. He brought with him uh, later, so w stay tuned to the end of the call so you can hear the successful one. You can hear the difference in tone and energy between these and those, and these guys can learn to be like that. So there's you know we can all change. Hey, Urban Girl, Tuesday at 3, we should go get coffee. So, again, he's blindly throwing darts at dartboard. First of all, she hasn't agreed to the general idea of hanging out with him, right? But Tuesday at 3, and she's like, cool, come to the office. So she's probably working at that time. So, again, like, uh, he's picking really bad times. Like, yeah, again, I'm assuming Tuesday at 3, most people are at work. Like, most people are not free to hang out at that time. Second of all, like, again, like, this is just poor closing. Like, okay, so when she says tomorrow is Thursday, 9 a.m., I don't even wake up. I would have I would have said something like that's cool. Um, what's your schedule like this weekend, or what's your schedule like next week? Like, actually get her to say what day she's free, and then you can invite her on those days instead of just like throwing dates. Oh, what about Monday at four, Saturday at one? You know, you're just like constantly throwing, and she she's like, no, I'm busy that day. No, I'm busy that day. It's so much easier just to be like, hey, so what's your schedule like? And then she tells you when she's actually free, and then like you just skip a whole bunch of rejection, and just get straight to it. It would be like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give like a pretty exam, uh, extreme example. It'd be like, let's say you're talking to a girl and you want to get her number. Uh, you know, you could be like, hey, what's your number? And then she gives your number. You could be like, hmm, is your number start with a nine? She's like, no. What about eight? Eventually you'll get there. Eventually she'll be like, yeah, it starts with a two. You're right. Okay, cool. Is this is the next, you know, it's just kind of like you're drawing the whole process out. At any point, she can just get bored and move on. Whereas if you just ask her what her schedule is like, she just tells you and then you can <laughs> make plans. Yeah, yeah, I can still totally. And it seems like he's picking times that are, it's highly likely she won't be free. It's like he wants to get rejected. And then he runs Almost, away. yeah, like Thursday at 9 a.m. That, that kind of blew my mind. Oh, and Tuesday at 3 is like most people at work is what you said. You know? <laughs> Especially since he like met her at work, so she, he probably knows her work schedule. So uh, he should kind of know that, you know. I understand. I fully respect this, but this is what I, I want because I'm man. I desire it. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? It's not what you want. That's okay. I mean, yeah, he's very incorrectly using a takeaway. And yeah, this is bad. She's like, she's telling him, I can't hang out with you because I'm going to be at work. That has nothing to do with her not wanting you. Like she probably wants to keep her job more than she wants to get coffee with you at 3 p.m. So yeah, this takeaway was just like really, really out of left field. I understand. I fully respect this, but it's what I want because I'm a man and I desire you as a woman. But this, this is this is not the time to like show his intent. Like they're coordinating schedules. It will, it will be like like you know, I'm trying to make plans with you to go. But yeah, like hey Brian, let's uh, let's do collaboration Friday at five. And you're like, hey dude, actually, yeah, you know, I'm kind of busy. I have another something else going on. Well, that's as a as, as a someone who's gonna co-promote with you. I want you to like you're like what the fuck are you talking about, dude? I'm just like can't do it during that time. It's kind of like the same thing. We're good as colleagues, sorry, but you shouldn't expect anything more. I rarely make friends and accept this. I'm available. This is probably a smoke screen because she's like, oh, this dude is getting weird. Uh, I'm just going to turn him down. So, yeah, I just – I mean, maybe she was legitimately not interested from the start, but he definitely set himself up to fail. Like, he set yeah. up pretty much everything in order to fail. Well, even if she – let's say she was interested in the start, by writing that thing he wrote at that time the way he did it, I think she would she would immediately lose all interest too. Yeah, it just makes no sense to the woman because she's like – I have to go to work and you know this because we used to work together. So like, what does this have to do with me not being interested? Like, so it just makes no sense from her perspective at all. Yeah. Yeah. I totally see what you're talking about. I see a lot of his uh, insecurities coming up in this. And that's why he's writing the way he's writing it. It's just a lot of fear, you know, and, and he's trying, so he's, he's, his fear is getting, he's saying he's writing things to get himself rejected. 
Yeah, sometimes guys self-sabotage. I've seen this quite often. Like they're just like trying to set themselves up to fail. And then um, when things start going in that direction, they like, I don't know, kind of overreact, I guess, in a way. And they're like, oh, but you know, blah, blah, blah. And then they can almost at the end justify like, well, you know, she just wasn't interested in a way, right? But you really kind of set yourself up to fail from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, it's super true. And uh, unfortunately, I, I see it too much. I see guys that are actually decent guys that, that girls would like, and they just start, they get in front of a girl, start talking, start writing, and they, they're not themselves anymore. And uh, it's pretty wild. That's all the anxiety in their bodies, you know, getting them rejected. Yeah, um, it's like something they would never do with like a guy friend or something like that. Like, you know, I'm assuming that if this guy's texting one of his buddies, right, and the buddy's mm-hmm. like, hey, bro, I actually have to go to work Tuesday at 3 p.m. Bro, this is what I demand as a friend, you know, like he would never send that text probably like if he did, his friend would be like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I value our friendship. I just have to go to work. Right. But he probably would never that would never even happen. But for some reason, when it comes to a girl, their mind just starts doing all these loops and logic and common sense just goes out the window. Yep. Hey, can you address address something really quick? Somebody made a comment in here. One of the guys on here all the time. I don't think he knows you really well. Uh Um. He wrote, uh, this goes against what Brian teaches. This dude makes videos with John Anthony. I think he's talking about Anthony Johnson and um, 21 Studios. Okay. And uh, I have a video on, on Anthony Johnson's 21 Studios. It's a viral video, guys. Um, I don't agree with all of Anthony Johnson's opinions, but you know, it's a great place to get on there and have men see a, a healthy way of relating to women. So I... I I, you know, yeah, so. I, I don't. I, I don't agree with all of Anthony Johnson's opinion. I, I actually think he's probably talking about John Anthony lifestyle. That would make a little bit more sense. Oh, I don't know who that is. J Molf, you know John? Not really. No, I, okay. I was thinking of Anthony Johnson. So yeah, no, they have a similar name, Anthony Johnson and John Anthony, right? Yeah, Johnson. that's wild. Yeah, as a pure coincidence. But yeah, uh, I think he's talking about John Anthony. John, uh, uh-huh. I don't agree with everything John says either. But he's a friend of mine. Like you don't have to agree with someone hundred percent in order to find value in them or in order to, you know, collaborate with them. That's kind of what makes it interesting. If like I was just an exact replica of Brian, then what would be the point of doing this interview? Just, mm-hmm. yeah, we're just repeating. Well, I think I agree with you. Like on that's majority of things. Like mm-hmm. I can't think of anything of substance that you and I disagree on. we just kind of have a little different approach. You're more like, I think cold approach and stuff versus I do more like online, I guess it's the only difference. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, it comes down to, you don't throw the baby out with the bath water. And I look at the overall intent of the guy, if the guy's overall intent is just to hurt women, that's different, you know? But, right. Yeah. And that's not you. So, um, let's, let's dive in. I would be uh, curious if this guy can like point out specific things that like are at odds. Cause it'd be kind of interested to like discuss it. So to this person, if you can point out like some specific things that you think are of like value that we disagree on. Uh, this guy had John Anthony on for an interview on his channel. Those vids are the exact opposite of what Fearless teaches. Um, this is technique releasing plus feeling embodiment communication. So what he's saying is it's uh, communicate. He's saying that I, because I teach a lot of energetic and naturalized kind of energy that John Anthony uh, teaches technique, and that's the difference. And so you're really looking at something where you're, you're talking about a guy I've never met and I don't know. And you're saying that having somebody on that knows him doesn't make any sense because, because you, you've talked to him. I shouldn't talk to him anymore. That's, that's like, that's like, I can't have a friend. I, I let's say I'm more right winged. I can't have a friend that's more left wing because they have a difference of opinion. And, um, and that, uh, that just creates division. So, yeah, I would also say there's more than one way to skin a cat. So there's different ways to approach. Like the goal is to become better with women, right? We can all agree that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, there's more than one way to get there. Like there, one way is to, you know, heavily focus on technique. And one way is to focus on your inner game. They're both good. Uh, I would say that you know, on average, John relies more on external game. You rely more on internal game. But both of you guys aren't extremists. Like you believe in some external principles and he believes in, you know, internal a lot too. So it's just like, okay, one believes a little bit more in this one believes in more of that, but both have the same goal, right? It's kind of like, let's say you're trying to become a, a, a best MMA fighter. One fighter may focus heavily on jujitsu. One may focus on striking, but the goal is the same. And those people, it would be interesting. If those two people train together, right? That's how they get even better. Like you don't have to be, you know, both have to be exactly, you know, 80% jujitsu focus to be a good fighter, right? So it's kind of like that kind of logic. I'll, I'll show you a technique guy that I find interesting is uh, Todd Valentine. He's super technique 
and I find him very interesting. Um, I have my I, yeah, I have my disagreements with him uh, in the sense that I think he um, he overcomplicates game significantly. I would agree. He's he's an interesting guy for sure. That's the technique side of him, right? Lots of lots of technique for everything. <laughs> like too much technique though, like to the point where it just becomes like technique stacked on technique, and the girls like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, yeah, I've seen guys. Uh, I've seen guys do that successfully because the reason it works for them is these guys have a lot of feeling, and so techniques work for them, so then they get addicted to the technique because they they can already feel. They don't need as much technique, but they, it's it's like a Brad P back in the day. That dude didn't need half the technique he used, but. He was such a cool dude, and then he'd go out, but he he teach everything as a technique. And uh, he's he's. Did you ever meet Brad? No. Uh, he was a cool dude. And he he retired from the industry. Um, a lot of fun though. But I sort of see what you're talking about. It's like um, I think it's called attribution error. So it's you're it's, you something's working for you, but you think it's because of this other thing. I see with one of my good buddies who's like a lawyer. He's like a pretty charming, charismatic guy. And uh, he, you know, he gets girls and he's like, oh, it's because of this technique. I was like, no, dude, like you're pretty charming. Like, you know, like that technique actually didn't do shit. If anything, it hurt your cause. But there was enough value in you that the girl just kind of overlooked that weird one liner that you use. So I see this quite often as well. Yeah. Yep. Super true. Um, okay. Let's, uh, why don't we, well, you want to take a look at one of your successful ones since we did two that weren't successful? Yeah, yeah. Really let's compare that at, difference. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the, um, I sent you the folder, so let's open up um, the, it's, it's up. the the from website LR. The website one? Yeah. I'm going to try setting. My mic has been a little difficult lately. I'm trying to get it to uh, operate better. So I keep moving it around if you see me do that. I'm thinking about getting a new one. Yeah, sometimes I almost find that the uh, computer mic works better because with these ones, it's super sensitive on how close you are. So if you just move yeah. your head a little bit, it goes from being like good to shit. And it works so different on here than it does on Zoom. And it just, yeah, it's a pain in my butt. So, all right. So, yeah, let's, uh, this is, this is an online one. And then I also have a cold approach one. So, you know, uh, both for both situations, but it's going to be largely all the same principles. Hey, Trouble, hi, I like your style, thanks, I like your dog, dogs are amazing. So you see my openers are very simple, dogs are amazing, how are you doing today? Um, yeah, he's the best, is that yours in the pick also? So, so far it starts off actually pretty simple and platonic, right? That's okay, yes, he's a, nice, we can do a double date, right? So I'm using the dog thing as kind of like a flirty way of like saying, yeah, we should go on a date, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's going to get more interesting. Uh, Law sounds fun, hopefully they get out get along as good as we will so i'm already setting the frame that yo we're gonna have a good time we're going on a date uh we're gonna get along well right but i'm doing it in a more smooth way like if i'm just like i think we're gonna get along well that'll be a little kind of out of left field haha i'm sure they will what do you like to do for fun and then uh i just don't respond to her for 20 minutes because it's 7 a.m and hoping you don't mind if the a little bonus wondering if i could get your number okay good i say i run a business get quite busy but i enjoy travel going to the gym reading and various kinky activities just missing a little and then that's her name in my life i like boldness so i'm rewarding her thing she's asked for my number that's a good thing i like boldness and then i give her my number and then she doesn't text me for a few days so i double text her with don't be shy right that's like a little takeaway uh so then she texts me hey cutie it's uh, blah 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 i say ah the cute chick with a dog uh lol yep colorful hair and dog don't get me too excited now she doesn't respond give it a few days i re-engage her with the Ryan Gosling meme. I like to use this meme. She doesn't respond. I give it three more days. I think this is where guys lose out a lot, right? Because the the girl will stop texting and then they just give up and they don't text back two days later and to, or wait another few days and then and, and, and re-engage. And I find when you do that or when I've done that, a lot of times they just re-engage. They're just being flighty. Or maybe something you said in the moment made them think and they went back to, you know, who knows? But. Yeah, most most often it's just because if it's an attractive girl, she has a lot of options and you're just not priority yet. Uh, you know, like when you hook up with a girl, it's a different story or when you've gone a few dates with her. But it's uh, let's say it's a girl you've had a two minute conversation with or even worse, it's a girl you met online. She's dozens and dozens of options. So you're not priority. So you can't expect her to treat you like a priority. I think it's like a good experiment sometimes. Like I did this, you know, way back when is create a profile as a girl and see how many matches they get. It's like. You know, like an average girl would get like 500 likes a day. It's like insane, it, mm -hmm. insane amounts of like matches and volume. So, yeah, you do have to be a little like, you know, 
uh, persistent, right? If you want to get the attractive girls, you know, like the unattractive girls, it probably will be easier with, but um, are you always this talkative? So this is a good way to do a, you know, a call out, a takeaway, right? It's, uh, but you wouldn't use this text. See, the problem is a lot of guys get into is they use these takeaways incorrectly. So if she says, hey, cutie, it's her name. And I say, are you always this talkative? That's an incorrect way of using the takeaway. It's going to make no sense. She's like, what are you talking about? Text me back. But because she had not responded two texts in a row, now it makes sense. Sorry, hectic days. So I disconnected for a bit from Tinder and all that jazz. And then let's keep going. What if uh, she texted, was texting really minimal? You know, like some girls will write one word answers like three or four times. Would you use that yeah. takeaway? I would use a different one. I would say a woman, a few words I see. Ah, okay, good. So good. I, I, have like, I have like a takeaway for every type of situation, you know, because are you always this talker? That will work, but, uh, you know, but then at that point, she, she can just troll you and she can just say yes, you know, and then what do you do, right? So again, kind of like chess. You don't want to like, you know, trap yourself, right? So a woman, a few words I see, it's she can't just be like, she could still technically say yes, but it's, it just makes more sense given that behavior. So anyway, so she says, sorry, hectic day. So disconnected, blah, blah, blah. Could I ask a totally unique and non-stereotypical question? What are you looking for? I say very unique. I say to meet a cool girl I have chemistry with, maybe break my multiple oral orgasms record. So the first, uh, this, this is a two-part, uh, you know, text and both parts are key. So to meet a cool girl I have chemistry with, that's answering her logical question. If I just say, oh, to break my multiple oral orgasms record, she's going to write me off as a fuckboy, Right. Uh, the second part of the text is what sexualizes it. Now, you don't actually have to say that. You can. I've had many situations where I've hooked up with girls without sexualizing it over text. It's not a necessity, uh, contrary to what some people think. But it is very helpful, uh, especially because this was during COVID times. So you're going to see later on, uh, I was able to get her to basically come straight to my place. Like, we went for a walk and then come straight. But I don't think she would have done that if there was no sexuality. You know, it probably would have resulted in a date in the park or something like that. So... By doing some of the sexualization up front, you make yourself job a little easier later on. Uh, it just it just comes down to style. Do you like to do all the work, you know, at the end, or do you like to do some of it up front? Ooh, now you're the one getting me excited. I'm pretty open minded with regards to what I'm looking for, but do you prefer to meet and get to know someone first, wondering if that's a deep. So basically, she's saying, are you going to expect sex from me right away? Right, that's what she's getting at. And what I want to say is not all. I like to build some casual chemistry first. It also makes the sex way better. So. This was a concern. She's just like, okay, I just don't want you to expect sex from me as soon as we meet. And I have to address that. Uh, I probably went in hindsight. Again, there's no way, no way of knowing these things, you know, while you're doing it sometimes. But in hindsight, it probably would have been better if I left the second part of that text out. It also makes the sex way better because I think that she read that the wrong way. Uh, I think it would have just been better if I said not at all. I like to build some some chemistry first. That would have probably been better. Uh, and then I hit her with, were you hoping for a different answer a few days later? She doesn't respond. So then I hit her with one of my favorite memes, waiting for you to text back like dead. <laughs> <It's built in. laughs> I love that. I love that meme. I like that one. That one's, yeah, good that one. one's great. Uh, here she sends me a gift. Listen to me. If we break quarantine, we could all die. Aren't you? Uh, she works in the medical field. Uh, so I just say that because the assumption is that like people in the medical field, like, you know, break quarantine all the time. Lol, GIF was not serious. But yeah, I worked in the ER for a bit with all the coronavirus craziness typically. Yeah, so, And then so she's basically saying, so here I hit her with sounds like you could use a little stress relief, you know, because her job, she doesn't respond. I hit her with a few days later, am I wrong? She doesn't respond. I wait a week and I hit her with honestly didn't take you for the flaky type. Right. And that's a very powerful text uh, because no girl wants to be known as the flaky type. Uh, she says, I'm really not. But notice I'm, oh, really quick. Notice how many times she stopped responding and he pulled her back online. That's that's pretty, pretty impressive. Oh, yeah, and, for sure. I'm pretty yeah. good at that, <laughs> that kind of <laughs> shit. I'm really not, but I'm not just looking for a hookup. All right. So now we got to the root of the issue here. So she's under the impression that I'm just looking for a hookup. Right. Probably largely based on the way my profile is, you know, where it's like, uh, you know, like whatever shirtless self picture. But probably also. um because I said that text that, that you know mentioned earlier, I could have uh, you know uh, rewarded better. And so here is uh, where I'm going to get her to question her assumption. So I could just say I'm not looking. Uh, I'm looking. Oh no no no, you got it all wrong. I'm looking for more than that, right? But then she's going to be like, oh yeah, of course you're saying that now. You know, it's much better to get her to question her assumption herself. So think about it, like I don't know if you guys watched the movie Inception, but 
the goal is to get the guy to question his view of reality, right? That's how they you know, plant the ideas in his mind. There's like different levels. So I'm just going one level lower instead of just telling her that I'm not looking for a hookup. I'm actually getting her to come to that conclusion. She says, true, never directly. I guess I assume based on flirty texts and mentioning sex, which I'm not against, but Tinder does have a reputation. So here I say, yes, I do like me some flirty texts, but now I'm over one night stands. Always found them a bit unfulfilling. Plus sex, plus sex gets even better after you build some chemistry. So now that here I'm just reframing and you know basically correcting her. We'll have to agree with that. A little tension makes things more interesting, in my opinion. I apologize for assuming too many people are looking for just that. All right, cool. Now it's gonna be much more smooth because we got past her, you know, uh, her, you know, whatever objection, I guess. Mm, tension can be uh, very rewarding. It's cool. I'm glad we're on the same page. So you've been up to during this quarantine, mainly been getting work done. Perhaps it could be my distraction. Well, I'm always, once I get back on track, I'm always bringing things towards the meetup. What I don't want to do is just banter and banter with her forever, right? So I want to, once I solve the problem, I'm moving things back to, you know, the goal, which is the meetup. Uh, so looking for someone to prevent you from getting work done. Hmm, perhaps if you play your cards right, maybe a cute one with colorful hair, right? So I'm just flirty text. Do you like wine? Well, I definitely like messing around with fun haircuts to mess on drink. Maybe a fun mocktail for me. Okay. Let's keep going. I say, all right, we can share Shirley Temple on my romantic balcony. So again, I'm always trying to make things as easy as possible for myself. So if I can get her straight to my place, that makes things easier. Now, if she objects like she's going to do in this case, then I can always go to plan B. Right. She says, not scared away like that. Sounds like nice evening. By the way, I've got nothing against others drinking. Just wanted to mention that. I say, oh, it takes more than that to scare me away. What's your schedule like? So you can see also just compared to some of the examples we read, the vibe is a lot more flirty, right? It's not like mm -hmm. outwardly sexual, but it's like very flirty. It's kind of like, you know, we're just kind of teasing each other. I, I want to put it into a little bit of uh, terms that a lot of my guys understand because I, I see what, what you're doing is you're playing with a, a, a balance between – Stepping into enough tension and then oscillating into some vulnerability when she's when when you need to if there's too much resistance, but you're never letting either of those die. You're dancing in those those. It's almost like music. You're dancing in the rise of tension, dropping into vulnerability, back into tension. Uh, most a lot of tension actually, and I see a lot of these other guys are by getting analytical, writing too much. They're just they're killing it. It's like a monotone note that's dead, or sometimes even even they're creating tension that does that doesn't feel good. It's like a bad note that's off tune or something. Mm, that's that's an interesting way of putting it. I've actually never looked at it like that, but I think it's very accurate. I, I've always looked at it kind of like uh, I want my text game to be one round. So I don't want to be one dimensional where I'm just the guy that's sexualizing or just the guy that keeps trying to go for the meetup or just the guy who's like, you know, bantering with a girl. I want my texting to incorporate all these things. I want it to be flirty while I'm moving things forward, while I'm bantering with a girl while i'm addressing concerns and objections while maybe i'm gay and being a little vulnerable when necessary so i like to look at it as like a combination of everything in the most succinct way possible right so all of those themes i try to kind of get across in a few words as possible basically yeah and that's another way that's a that's, that's another way of just saying all of that is ra raising and lowering the tension and keeping oh. it exciting and fun uh, cause everything boils down to some level of tension and vulnerability, masculine, mm. feminine, male, female, up, down, left, right, polarity. Uh, that's why I try to get them. To, I try to get them to feel that when they talk and then understand the techniques or, uh, uh, the little, this, everything you just talked about is, is, is activating that when I, when we do all our live stuff and I'm always, and then in the videos, I'm always trying to get them to see that, how I play with the tension, move it in and out. I'll pull, I'll pull on them with it. I'll step into it. Then I'll back it off because it's getting too much. You can see the tension's going too far and I'll drop into a little vulnerability now because, because I can see she need, we need a break for a moment and I'm doing it to both of us, not just her. It's like a group effort. She's doing it back to me. Um, and I see you doing I mean, the I same think, thing. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really good. I think it's very important, especially on dates. Uh, I've never really, yeah, I mean, I, your assessment makes sense. I've never really thought of it that much about building tension over text, but it does make sense the way, but in, in terms of like, when you're actually out on a date with a girl, I always thought that was like the biggest thing is building sexual tension. And guys often mm -hmm. ask, Oh, how do you know when it's time to go for the move? How, how do you know when it's time to make out with her to bring her back to your place? And my answer was always like, you know, once you feel there's a good amount of sexual tension, right? Uh, that's always been my answer to that. But a lot of guys really struggle with either building tension or maintaining tension they're just really not good at it. Or even seeing it. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think guys, that's what Yeah, I think some guys just can't see it. It's happening to them. A girl might even give them some sexual attention and they're clueless. Or mm -hmm. they don't understand how to, what it feels like. And and so, I just wanted to throw yeah, that in. 
when you when you can play with that sexual tension like like kind of like an instrument that's when things get really interesting that's when you can like really do cool things with game uh okay so not scared away like i said by the way just gonna say okay she talks about drinking hmm Hurt my wrist at work, so I'm off for a big guess. It's a good and bad thing with everything going on. Besides that, I've got a couple of things by to do, but I'm free after Tuesday. Another thing I want to point out is what I was talking about earlier, uh, optimally closing. So the soft close is, uh, you know, we should we should drink, uh, we should get a drink sometime soon. She agreed to that. Then I asked her what her schedule is like. I'm not just saying, oh, let's, you know, get that mocktail Tuesday at, you know, 9 a.m., right, or whatever. Or like Tuesday at 8 p.m. I'm just, I'm first on getting her to agree to the general idea of meeting up with me that I'm asking, figuring out her schedule. Now I'm going to go for the hard close. So it's a three-step process. Basically the M I'll be sure to kiss it and make it better. Uh, so again, I don't often use winky faces, but occasionally they can be good. Um, I use them. I mainly use emojis to show that I'm kidding. So I don't want this girl to, even though most people won't, but in real life, I would just say, Oh, she's like, I hurt my wrist. I'm like, damn, you want me to kiss it and make it better. Right. But she can see that I'm not truly serious. It's more in a flirty way over text. Sometimes it doesn't come across. So the emoji is my way of ensuring that she knows I'm not actually planning on grabbing her by the wrist and like kissing her wrist, you know, uh, even though most girls wouldn't assume that, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. Same. I have a long call tomorrow, but how about Tuesday, Wednesday night? Wednesday's probably better. Any parks open near you? Would you be able to post a meeting on a first? So here she's saying she doesn't want to meet straight at my place. All right, Wednesday night it is. And yes, there's two stranger danger. I don't know, should I be worried or should you? I say neither of us. I have a good feeling about this. We can take my dog for a walk. So that's a nice little way of, you know, I could meet her in a park nearby and I could still bring her back to my place, but if she just meets me outside my place. We take my dog for a little walk, and then we go back inside. That makes things easier. Oh, I love to meet your pup. I love dogs. Is that the husky? Yes, just send a cute picture of him. Oh, what a cutie, girl or boy. And you've given me an opening to ask about your tattoos. Yes, he gets that from his owner. Yeah. yeah. See, it's very flirty. Uh, working. <laughs> she just sends this gift. Uh, uh, maybe our dragons will become best friends. So a lot of we frame, which is like talking about you two as a unit. Maybe a lull. I guess we'll find out soon. Just wondering, where do you stay by? That's a good question to get. It's like a buying question. Uh, it, I just sent her my address. She says, it didn't have to be your exact address. I guess you trust me. I actually happen to know that area, live, blah, blah, blah. How back can someone with a cute dog be? Good, where are you now? So here we're just a little banter. Not too far. I think our love will survive. And then uh, this is at 2 p.m. on Wednesday. So that we have the date set. So at 5 p.m., I double text her. Time we free tonight. Hey, good afternoon. On the way back home now. Should be free around 9. Does that work for you? Yes, perfect. Uh, There's a really you? good oh. balance between your texts and hers too, which I, I often see off with guys. You know, you're you're not yeah. texting a lot more than her and trying to win her and trying to convince her to, to talk to you. Yeah, no, I never do that. Uh, I try to generally speaking match the girl's level of investment because when you go over it, it just it just sets a bad frame. Yeah. People want what you know is not easy to get. So if the girl knows that she has you before meeting you, she's going to be less likely to meet you. It's kind of one of the ironies of human nature. Uh, but if the girl's not sure, like this guy's interested, but I don't know if he really, I can really get him. That's going to make her more interested in you know meeting you and seeing if she can like kind of win you over, if she can get you, if you're a little bit of a challenge. Not too much of a challenge. Like some guys play too cool and show no interest, and that can also backfire. But kind of, but not also being the guy that's overly sold, like the other example we saw, like somewhere in the middle. Uh, yeah, so this is the, you know, here we're just talking about logistics a little bit. Nothing special here. Uh, <laughs> this, is a, this, is, this is a funny little text I like to use. So when the girl says that she's outside, I say coming, I spelled C-U-M. So like says a nice little frame <laughs> that it's going to be sexual. Usually they have a good laugh about that when I meet them. And then after that, uh, you know, we uh, went for a walk, uh, pulled her back to my place in 15 minutes of the walk. And then we actually wound up chilling on my couch for like half an hour. Uh, then uh, started making out and then we hooked up. So make it home okay. I always like send that text. Yeah, nice drive, no traffic. Good. That was hot. Agreed, lol. And then there you have it. Okay. So that was really good. You can see the difference in the texting style and actually how much, in a weird sort of way, less work you're putting in. Um, I see that the other guys are putting in a lot more work. Uh, they're writing bigger paragraphs, a lot of data, trying to convince. And you're more like focusing on having fun. And yeah, I would say like a good way of looking at it, if you look compare this to like some of the examples we saw, even though my text game is better, it's actually less complicated. It's more simple, right? So simplicity actually equals better. So sometimes guys think, oh, if I want to improve my text game, I need to be even more elaborate, even more witty. But usually the solution yeah. is to go actually in the other direction and just simplify shit. 
Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think that's true of pretty much everything. Almost everybody awesome. overcomplicates. Yeah. And uh, heady guys, especially the, a lot of the guys that get into this stuff, super heady, and they overcomplicate uh, over all the time. So let's dive in. And uh, you want to take some questions? We've been going at this for a little bit now. It's already, been, it's already yeah. 6 o'clock. So let's dive and take some questions. I would love to take a question from uh, who? Uh, Avila Love. She's, it's interesting. We have a woman on here today. Um, I don't know if she's still on here. It would be cool to get in, if she's got any interesting questions popping up. She seems sweet. So uh, what do we got? What do we got, George? Cairo. Uh, nothing so far. So see um, which questions in the chat, guys, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you want, also, I think it would be interesting. One of the um, examples is a guy who tries to take my text game that he uses it completely incorrectly. And I, I like that example because Let's do that right now while they come up with questions. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it really it quick. It shows you yes. what you can happen when you try to take a good idea, but you use it incorrectly. Okay. So, guys, your job is to find some questions. If I look through, there's a lot of comments. I'm surprised you guys didn't pop in questions. It's going to be the one that says um, from the vid. Oh, there was one. Uh, there was one while you're looking that up. Somebody asked who's the uh, the best you've ever – somebody was asking who's, who are the best uh, guys you've ever been out with in terms of actual game. Just thought that was an uh, interesting question. One of the best guys I've been out with – some of the best guys I've been out with, they're not people you know because they're not in the community. They're more just like cool, natural guys. Um, the super yeah, well, I think, yeah, one of the best guys I know who could do like the most crazy, like whatever, pick up shit, he's like not really you – know, you, you wouldn't know him. He works in – tech or whatever and he's like married with a kid now but uh when we were in our early 20s i used to seem like we, we used to go to a bar and there would be like it was like a fancy bar and there was like one hot girl with like four dudes and he'd be like yo she's hot i'm like yeah but she's with a bunch of guys he's like i got this and then he would like fucking finagle his way in and then like two minutes later the girl's just talking to him and all the guys are like confused he used to do like this crazy social engineering shit so that i, I could I always had a hard time like wrapping my yeah, mind around that they're always naturals are totally like that. They love the challenge. They love to compete with each other. They love to steal each other's girls. Um, opposite of what they would guys and pick up do. And, uh, you know, um, there was a guy, I don't know if you know him. Did you know Jason? Jason Savage? No. Jason was really fucking good. Um, insane. He actually got super insane. And then just disappeared. 2011. Vanished one day. His email, his blog, his phone number all stopped working. His blog's still sitting there, empty, and no post since 2011. Nobody and nobody that knows him knows what happened to him. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Uh, well, cool. the one downside with naturals is that sometimes they have a really most of them have a really hard time explaining why would they do worse. So really, yep. the only way you can learn from a natural is to actually observe them and pick up on it yourself, which I was able to do with this guy. But whenever I would ask him, he had a really hard time explaining. That That's every natural I ever met. Much. Yeah, I'd, I asked. Remember Daniel? I always tell the story of Daniel. I was sitting with him. I was terrible with women, terrible. And I'm, and he, every girl wanted him at this yoga cult that I was in. And every girl was want Daniel this, Daniel that. So I, I pulled him aside and I just like, dude, what what do you do? What do you do to get all these women attracted? He goes, what do you mean? What do you do? And he goes, I just talk to him. He goes, that's your dude, man. Women like dudes. They like guys. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to talk to him. He didn't have any concept. It's just. I'm a yeah. guy. Why, why? Why wouldn't a girl want me? You know? it's, it's very, it's very intuitive. Yeah, they, they've never really sat down and thought about it. Yeah, it is super intuitive. Anyways, uh, let's dive in. Uh, you got it ready to go? Uh, we got like two questions there, so maybe we can ask them and then we go jump into the other one. Okay. Uh, I don't want to feel like I'm uh, just using lines. What do I do about it? Don't use lines. Well, but, yeah, the solution. Ahead. Yeah, don't don't use lines. Uh, so I never, I very rarely. Guys quite often ask me, like, oh, what are the best lines? And I do give some examples, like, but I always tell guys not to just copy and paste my lines. And actually, an example you're about to pull up, you're going to see how really bad it is to just copy and paste lines without really understanding. So what I try to do is understand the principle so then they can come up with their own shit or just modify my lines appropriately. But if you're just blindly copy and pasting lines, not only is that like, probably something you don't want to do, but it's also going to have pretty bad results most of the time. Um, so the solution is to understand why that line was being used rather than just like copy the line. Yeah, you got to be in emotional alignment with what you're saying. So if it doesn't feel good to you, I used to see, I see you use Hey Trouble a lot. And I used to use Hey Trouble a lot in bars and I used it because it, I liked it. I was comfortable with it. I would just didn't know what to say. I'd just say Hey Trouble because it felt oh, I've never used that line in real life. Oh yeah, you use it constantly. And uh, if I didn't know what to say, I'd just go, hey, Trouble, what's up? And it would work, you know? And 
I'd say it in different ways and girls all responded differently and they'd have fun with it. And, but I, it wasn't a line because I liked it. I had fun with it. Now, if I didn't like it, it'd be super fucking weird. So anyways, uh, did you have another one or do you want to jump into the next conversation? Yeah, we can use the example that uh, Alex was talking about. Okay, let's go for it. Yeah, so this is uh, this was one of my clients, and uh, I'll give a very quick backstory so that it makes sense. So this was a um, this chick was friends with his sister. Uh, they had met up multiple times at their house, and this chick actually had a crush on him. So he's actually starting like at a good point, like where, like this girl actually likes him, right, or at least somewhat. So the first text of uh, the context is that he found out that uh, his sister and this chick dropped out of school. Uh, I told him that this text was like way over the top. Like he's like, I'm really sorry this happened that you're going through this. I wish you the best of luck. Like she just got lazy and didn't go to class. I mean, like, you know, it sucks. But like, you know, he's almost like treating it like as if she has cancer, you know, something. So you, you don't want to be the guy that's like overly understanding, right? Like if the girl's like, yeah, you know, I have a little bit of a headache tonight. So I don't know if I can meet up. Oh, my God. Are you OK? Right. Yeah, it's like way overkill, right? It's like, oh, cool, feel better, right? So the reaction has to be appropriate to the situation. And in this case, it wasn't, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, it's been tough, and thanks. I appreciate it. I'm sorry you're going through this. Again, like <laughs> sending positive vibes, just – okay, anyway, let's, 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 this is going to get more interesting. Let's go to the next uh, screenshot. Okay, so so okay, so this is this is where it sort of begins for real. So he says, hola, linda. Uh which I don't think really makes sense because I don't believe she's Spanish or Latina. But anyway, so then she doesn't respond. And then half an hour later, he double texts. And he kind of explained to me on our phone call what his logic was. He's like, well, you know, I sent her that message. It showed that she was online. So I figured she was ignoring me. So that's why I wanted to double text. And I was like, dude, just because it says someone's online doesn't mean they're actually present. Right? Like quite often, if you have my phone number and you look, it says I'm online. But I'm not actually like, texting people. I'm just like either in our company group chat or you know, whatever. Right. So and you can see the explanation. Hola, good morning. Sorry, I'm replying late. I knocked out yesterday. So it wasn't that she was ignoring him. She just wasn't on her phone. So I also want to point that out real quick. Again, him double texting here, it's far from a deal breaker. It doesn't mean shit. It's just like these small things are going to start to add up over time. I guess I would say I don't know yet. We haven't talked a whole lot for me to know that yet. What excites you about? And then he's talking about um, her career. He's changing the topic. And um in, in this situation, it's not a good thing. So he's kind of stepping away from the tension, like you mentioned earlier. Uh, so I, I guess I would say, I don't know yet. We haven't talked a whole lot for me to know that yet. So here I would have said that I guess we'll have to change that then, right? Mm. Kind of building on the yeah, tension. Yeah. She gave yeah. him this easy layup, right? But he just completely dropped it by changing the topic. Um, I can get back to others and try to be that change and make uh, change another phase. Try to make, that's exciting. Being a small part is very important. For, I feel some uh, – let's, let's keep going. Feel. I feel the same about my job and clients. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Big on that. And yes, congrats. Glad you found a job you love. So you're the point where you've lost the count. You study every... So he's just, again, it's purely platonic. They're talking about school and work. Um, uh, yeah, which is going to... This is going to be even more important as we go on. So I just want to... I want to point this out that the conversation starts off very platonic, right? Which mine did also initially, but then it smoothly transitioned to something more flirty. So it's okay to start off platonic to kind of get your foot in the door. But you do want to transition. Like every text, you do kind of want to amp it up versus this is just like very flat line. Uh, well, basically, especially due to the fact that my life is hectic, I feel you there. And props, I'll do like tequila. So it's kind of random, but it's fine. love tequila. You like drinking. Uh, let's go to the next one. I do quite a big. Sounds like we need to relax with some tequila, good food, and massage oil. So here's trying to sexualize. So that's, that is one of my lines. I do like to say, you know, reference massage oil. Here's the problem. This This comes out of left field. So purely platonic and then massage oil, boom, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like a big jump. Now, if the conversation had been like somewhat flirty, then that would have been good. But here's just like two out of left field, right? The girl's like, what? Like, what's he talking about? Just asking about like school and telling me best regards. I saw about massaging me. Boom, tequila always hits. We can save the massage oil for another time, I guess. I have a Mexican seafood restaurant we should go to. We should go this weekend if you're available. Well, I'm all go, MAO, oh my God, a massage. I need, been really stressed. Well, I really were. All right, so this is, goes back to poor closing, which is something I see just all the time. Uh, he's skipping the soft close and he's skipping the part where he figures out her schedule and is just going straight for the hard close, basically. <laughs> so, much better way to say food and tequila always hits. I would have said, cool, we should get together and do some shots sometime soon. 
that's how you would soft close in the situation. Then she says, yeah, that sounds good. Then you would ask her what her schedule is like, right? Like what, like she, and you're going to see how she's like, yeah, I'm not free this weekend. Now he enters negative compliance. Uh, so she says, oh my God, massage. I've really been stressed as fuck and I really wear. So I might've said something like we should change that. But he already, I give the best massage. That's fine. He tells her the area ever been in blah, blah, blah. So this is just like logistics. Yeah. Uh, oh, let's go to the next one. Uh, oh yeah. I'm honest. Most restaurants I don't care for. It's gross. I feel you Lol. text me. So he's changing gears and he does that a lot. Uh, it's me. Ah, uh, the hot nurse. So this is like the first good text I saw so far. Ah, uh, the hot nurse. Well, thanks. So what are you up to? About to get an epic lift in and finding a better restaurant for us, you. I don't like this text. This may sound like small potatoes, but finding a better restaurant. You already proposed a good restaurant. She just doesn't like the area it's in. Like, why do you need to find a better restaurant? Uh, you know, so it's like, like he's the one that's trying to like make this date work. So if the girl like opposes, I'm like, hey, you want to grab drinks at this bar? And she's like, eh, it's kind of shitty. I'll be like, you know, I wouldn't be like, oh, let me find a better bar for us then. I'd be like, what? Like, you know, like what's wrong with it or something? Or I'd be like, okay, what are your suggestions then? About to get an epic lift in, finding, oh my God, are you? I'm here with some family drinking and eating. Yeah, I take my lifting very seriously. Well, it's dope. What food are you bringing back for me? Says, That's fine. Now it's getting a little flirty. That's good. Uh, but this is going to have a pretty epic ending. Uh, I love it. Oh my God, I really want to better my health too. So I feel that they don't have any... It's really refreshing. Totally recommend to anyone. Damn. Okay. So what day this weekend are you available for? Uh, I guess he's saying, uh, you know, for, oh, for the restaurant at seven. But like, why does it have to be seven? And why does it have to be this weekend? What if she works until 730? Now she has to say no to you. So much better way to say that. They don't have any left. They finish it. I'll be like, yeah, it's refreshing. Um, so anyway, what's your schedule like for drinks, right? Get her to actually say the schedule. Look at you making plants. Aha. You're in blah, 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 working, right? If you want, we can catch dinner out there because I'm going to be by my mom's house. I don't go out on the weekdays. It's kind of random. It's cool if you're a little nervous for this weekend, though. Totally understand nervousness. Okay. So this is him using some of my lines incorrectly. Now, you saw in – I didn't use that line exactly, but it is a line I use all the time. If you're nervous, I understand. But you have to use it correctly. In this context, it makes no sense because she's not showing any signs of nervousness. She's just like – She's investing, she's, she's actually. Trying, yeah, she's trying to make plans with you. Yeah. And he's throwing it out of the blue. Yeah, yeah it, it makes no sense. Total, I'm definitely not a nervous person whatsoever. Why are you nervous? Uh, so let's keep going. And this is where the downhill spiral starts. Hmm. I'm so nervous. Anyway, let's make this this uh, this happen this weekend. So that's actually fine. He's kind of like teasing her. That's fine. Let's make this happen this weekend. But why does it have to be this weekend? Like this is I see this all the time. Guys like you just like become very one dimensional. They like oh. I got to hang out with her this Saturday. And then it's like this Saturday or nothing, right? I asked him on the phone call, what was the significance of this weekend? He's like, no, nothing. I'm like, all right. Well, are you really? Well, it's okay. Nothing wrong. Not everyone's nervous. Totally. Well, I don't think it should be this hard to go out tomorrow. What's up? So he's using a takeaway, but there's nothing to take away from. Like, again, she's being compliant. Uh, she and, and you'll see, she says, I'll see. I have plans. So that's the reason why she was not jumping on your invitation because you didn't ask her what her schedule is like you're like let's do this weekend seven and girls typically if they like you especially as the case here they don't want to say no they don't want to say oh sorry i can't right typically women don't enjoy saying no especially if they like a guy so what she did is what most girls do is she diverted right went sideways right so again you can completely preempt this whole thing if you just figure out the girl's schedule this you can preempt all of this nonsense just by doing this one little extra step i'll see i have plans but i'll see what time i come home so that's never good to try to hang out with a girl after her plans, right? Because it's very up in the air. I would have just said after that, uh, I'll see how plans, but I'll see what time I come home. I would, say, I would have said, it's cool. We can do another night. What's a better night for you this week? Bam. Like actually pick a night where she's free, then you can make like legit plans. So to me, it's like also super sad because here's a chick who likes him. And this whole thing just like goes downhill due to one poor scheduling and two just improper use of takeaways. All right, so then he says, hey, girl, happy Saturday. Uh, okay, so. And she keeps coming back. No, she's interested. Like, you can tell. Yeah. You know, she's happy Saturday, mm -hmm. Lowell. How's your morning going? Pretty good just hanging out with this guy. So that's another one of my <laughs> You, nice in here in bed just chilling. Is it time for drinks yet? Uh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm still bet. What time are we getting back to? I don't know. Plans change. Kind of upset, but doesn't surprise me. Look, if you're not to this, just let me know and I can stop trying. Okay, here we go again. Again, the problem with this takeaway is you don't actually have plans with her. 
All you have is her saying, I have plans, but if I'm free, I'll let you know. This would be the equivalent of uh, me hitting you up for a coaching session. Like, hey, Brian, uh, I really want to do a coaching session this weekend. Can I get in on Saturday? You're like, dude, I'm pretty booked up with people, but if something opens up, I'll hit you back. And then I hit you up on Saturday. I'm like, dude, if you don't want to coach me, that's fine. It's going to make no sense. Like, I, you know, that's, it just makes no sense given the context. It's the same exact thing here. I, again, like going back to what I said earlier, like a lot of the common sense and logic that guys have in normal situations goes out the window with girls uh, for some reason. I don't know even what this is. Also, we're friends as of now, so I don't know what you're trying to say by all that. Uh, I mean, we don't completely know each other well either. Like I would need to get to know you better. Trust me, I would never be the one to be around the bush. Very. All right, so this is a very long-winded way of her saying, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, we should go out tonight to get to know each other better. Again, like, why does it have to be tonight? Like, like she, he's just like so stuck on getting her out that night. I think us not going out would be anticlimactic. We have nothing to lose by going out tonight. So it's like it's, one paragraph just dedicated to like trying to get her out that and night. And I think you commented on this. I think this is really important. Is she says uh, she gives him this whole like tension base. He can feel her pushing back, and then he immediately goes to another close. And as soon as she pushes back hard a little bit, he, uh, I'm going to try to close again because there's like a sense of grasping, right? Would you, say, you know what I mean? No, 100%. Yeah. She, she's uh, she's like pulling back and he's just like over chasing and that's going to make her pull back yeah. more. So it's kind of like if you think of it as a dance when someone pulls back, you pull back a little bit and then they come in and it's like kind of like this. Yeah. It's, just, it's just him chasing after her. It's not even that. To be honest, my situation is complicated right now. And well, I'm not going to lie with you. I'm on a break and didn't have plans before. Uh, so again, what she's saying is like, but I already have plans tonight. So that's why, you know, I also don't want you getting wrong intentions of me. So if you think that's fine, no worries, cool. Can you elaborate which part of me? This, this, this whole conversation thread is so unnecessary. Like there's no need to be discussing any of this because she's down to hang out with you. All you have to do is just make better plans. Uh, this is just like poor communication one-on-one on his part. Uh, can you elaborate which part everything from, and well, no worries at school, uh, yeah, and, and uh, well, like I said, my life's complicated. I'm going through a lot. I don't want to lead you on wrong. But if you don't understand, basically what she's getting at is like, dude, you're being, you're making my, you're giving me a headache, and you're being overly complicated. And I don't know if I have enough energy to deal with your shit. Basically, uh, what are you looking for right now? I'm trying to balance my life. I mean, while you're on a break, what do you mean? What kind of relationship are you looking for? Nothing serious. Again, like these are all questions that are completely irrelevant to the topic at hand. The topic at hand mm -hmm. was you trying to make plans. Like he, in his mind. This girl is being difficult on purpose. She's not meeting up with me. She has some kind of concern or objection. In reality, you just did a very shitty job of actually planning things out, right? So there's no deeper yeah. layer here. It's a girl who's interested in you, you just really set up the date poorly. And now you're chasing her away by, you know, with all the shit. Nothing serious. Um, so she sends her voice memo. I'm not really sure what they said. Like, I totally think you're a good guy. I can tell you. Plus, you come from a great family. I think there's one more, right? Or is that it? No, that was it. Yeah. So uh, I believe that was, I think that's where it ended. Uh, I don't know what happened after that. I gave him a good text to use after that. But yeah, like the whole thing just like start off good, but then just like spiral downhill. Very much so. And it's funny. He's projecting onto her that she's being difficult. He's being difficult. He's projecting onto her what he's being and uh, getting in his own way. Yeah. It's like the sad irony here. Yeah. Crazy stuff, man. This is what, what I, uh, it's one of the things I realized years ago, you know, we're in, it's because of what Daniel said to me, that guy I told you about earlier. We're built to attract women, guys. We, we, they're, they, they, hormonally, they're designed to want to fuck us. And you're self rejecting most of the time. You're out there finding ways to tell women not to fuck you, not to, you know, and, and notice how much less Alex is doing in the text and how hard these guys are working and making it complex for themselves. That's uh, yeah. that's the big. Go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's it's kind of like almost like a little sad for me because I I see a lot of my own lines, but then I see them like being used incorrectly, and then like it's like oh like I guess Alex's teachings don't work right, but it's, you know like <laughs> if you take like it's like oh you know I tr uh, weightlifting okay I, mean, I put four hundred pounds my first time benching oh I hurt my chest like oh I guess weightlifting doesn't work right it's kind of like that sort yeah. of thing. If you yeah, like the women guys, a lot of coaches say never compliment a girl. It doesn't work. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? Compliments work. It's, yeah, it's compliments how you're work. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And when and how and timing and all that stuff, all factors. And uh, unfortunately, 
Yeah, if you saw it in the in the good example, I started off with a compliment. I like your style, right? That's that's a compliment. Yeah, yeah girls love that stuff too. I mean, because you're not just saying, "Hey, you're pretty." <laughs> you know, right. you got a you got a good vibe, got good energy. Um, okay, but do we have a, a difference between a compliment like that and like the compliment we saw in the first example, which is like, "Oh, you totally uh, what's it called? You totally made a strong impression on me, or something like that," right? So it's 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 not whether compliments work or not. It's just like the details and the, uh, the Jesus is in the details. Well, also when he said you made a strong impression on me, he was saying it in response to what there was a, a moment. She wrote a bunch of stuff and said, well, we'll be here. Do you want to join us? Me and my friends. Yes. I'll, and he said, yes, you made a strong impression on me. So that what implied to me was, uh, yes, I'm willing to go out of my way because you made a strong impression on me and, uh, and do what you oh. do, what you want to do. Like, where do you want me to be? I'll show up there. And, I, and that sounds like a puppy a little bit, you know, and that's, yeah. that's not, not what we want. Um, awesome. Uh, do we got any couple, a couple questions we can take before we close out the day? Yeah, we got questions that came in finally, so I'll put them up on the screen. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay. After you meet with her, how much do you sexualize the conversation? Um, well, it depends on the context. So let's go to the girl from the example. Um, I, first of all, okay, let, let me just kind of backtrack. I sexualizing the conversation is only one of the ways you can sexualize and it's not my favorite. Uh, and for when I'm in person, I prefer to sexualize with eye contact, with, uh, body language, with touching and stuff like that. Um, verbally I do it to some extent. But it's not like, like, again, it's all in time and place. So when I first meet her, I'm not like, hey, mm, look at that ass, right? Like, I, it, it starts off like when I met her in real life, kind of how you saw it in the text thing. It started off fairly, like, benign. I was like, hey, good to see you. Like, think, you know, uh, glad we finally met up. Like, let's go for a walk, right? The first few minutes were, like, pretty, you know, yeah, I gave her a strong hug and there's good eye contact. But it wasn't like I was sexualizing right away. And, like, you know, once there's a little comfort, you know, then I slowly started amping it up. But I do prefer to sexualize, generally speaking, again, with like touching, with eye contact, rather than so much focus on the verbals. Yeah, vo vocal tone is a big one, too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I talk pretty differently when I'm on a date. If you watch Infield with me, it's pretty different than during a podcast, because usually when I'm doing a podcast, something I'm trying to explain my thoughts as fast as possible, uh, right? Because I don't want to like you know keep you guys here for twice as long as the, I, you need to be. But when I'm with a girl, it's a little different. I slow down my speech deliberately and just draw everything out and add a lot of more emotion to everything I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, awesome. I love that. That's exactly, that's, I think that's, that's where the basis. If you're going to use a words, this is what I'll say. If you're going to use words to sexualize, it's all going to start with what Alex just said. You got to get the tone. You got to get the energy. You got to get the vibration right before you use the words anyway. So if you go right to the words and now none of that's right, it's going to seem weird. So let's see another one what do we got so i got this two right here that are kind of the same so it's always about using online dating um so this is one of them right here why should How i do I... swiping apps and then also following up like i only get two matches a year i might be too picky no it's your profile probably just sucks like you probably have bad pictures out of wager you know like a thousand dollars on it uh you know i don't think you're being i mean I guess it's theoretically possible, but every time I get this question, it's just the guy has a poor profile, so you don't have enough leads coming in. So I, I would wager that you have maybe like one like coming in a day. I severely doubt he has like 10 or 15 likes coming in every day. So the reason you have a poor impression of online dating is because you're not successful with it. Uh, you know, I would have a poor impression of, you know, working out if every time I went to the gym, I hurt my shoulder, right? You know, after a while, I'd be like, fuck, you know, working out sucks, you know? Uh, if every time I went to play with my dog, he bit me, I'd be like, fuck, having a dog sucks, you know? So it's not that online dating sucks. It's just that your experience with online dating has sucked so far. So at that point, we have to take a look at what the reason for that is. And chances are largely is that because you have poor pictures, so you're not getting results. So it's not that you don't care. It's just that that's the defense mechanism you have because you're not getting results, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting what you just said there, that one piece too, is that your profile looks bad. And a lot of it comes down to pictures, uh, comes down to what you, you, you know, have written and stuff. And you talk about that in your opinion on your website. Uh, and I think it's an interesting one because guys have asked me and I look at it and I tell them, yeah, this sucks. And, but they won't do anything to change it. A lot of times it's like, there's a resistance to 
finding out the tr- that if they actually get good pictures, will girls like me? It's like, it's a weird thing. And then they fight it for a while before they actually go and make the effort to take some real pictures and get some good shots, find out the ones that look good. They just don't want to do it. And uh, I think it's a fear more than anything because once they do, they're much happier. Yeah, if we just take a look, how do I care enough to use these swiping apps? If I, if I said, yo, dude, I guarantee you that you will hook up with – uh, you know, two hot girls every week. And if you don't, I will pay you a thousand dollars every week. You would care. Like you would be all no swiping apps like that. You'd be like, fuck yeah, it's a win-win. Either I'm gonna get the hot girls, I'm gonna get a thousand dollars, right? So it's again the reason you don't care is because you're apathetic. You're apathetic because the results are not there. I would be apathetic too if I went to the gym for two years straight. I made no progress, right? And like it's like what the fuck? Like what am I even doing here? But if you're going to the gym and you see yourself week after week looking better, right? That you start to become a lot less apathetic. Same kind of thing. Yeah, I would agree. And I think the, the, and this just as much applies to your texting with girls you meet on the street, guys. A lot of you guys are meeting girls on the street and getting phone numbers, but then you're doing the same texting stuff uh, after you get the phone number. So, so uh, remember that. What do you do when a girl keeps randomly messaging uh, you out of the blue, then stops reading and replying? Hmm. Yeah, so there, there could be multiple reasons why that's happening. Probably the most common one is I call like the girl who's hot and cold. Uh, so she'll be hot one minute, she'll like send you a bunch, of, and then she just she kind of jumps out for like a few days, and then she goes back to being hot and cold. Um, those are not as bad as a girl who's just always cold and not invested. Uh, you can actually turn those around. I've had many examples of me turning around like the hot and cold girls. Uh, but to answer your question, what do you do? Well, you want to capitalize on the moments when she's hot and you want to basically send a clear message to her without actually saying it that the only way she's going to get your full attention is is if she meets up with you. So you don't want to be like entertaining her over text when she's in the mood to chat, right? So without saying it, I am implying that the only way this conversation will go to a place where you want it to is if we meet up. Uh, So like, for example, she might say like, oh, why, why, why do you never text me back? Or like, oh, you know, you, you, you know, she might accuse you of what she's doing, right? You'll be like, we can chat more on our date. And that person, you're sending the message again. If she wants all of your attention, she has to meet you. It's not going to happen over text. Good answer. Awesome. Um, got any more? Okay, what do we got here? Can't see part of it. Hold on. Okay. I... J Mac Entertainment. It's like a porn star, I believe. <laughs> He's on here every week, I think. I hate texting. What do you guys feel about calling a girl after getting her number instead of texting? There's there's no problem with calling. I think calling is good. I personally like phone calls too. Um, the problem is, is that some chicks, especially the younger you go, the harder time you're going to have getting them on the phone. Because a lot of like the 18, 19-year-old girls, they don't even know that you can use a phone call to make calls, uh, honestly. So... Yeah, a lot of that depends on your age range. If you're an older guy you're going for girls in 30s and 40s, then it's going to be it's going to work a lot better than if you're a younger guy going for young girls. Honestly, um, that's that's a big factor. But I think it's just better to to kind of let her know that you're going to be calling her. Like, if you can just do a few texts where you're like you know you send her your name, say so like, hey, and you're and then you can be like, hey, uh, want to chat on the phone a little bit later tonight for a few minutes? Right, give her that false time constraint so that she knows. You're not going to be on there for two hours. You can still talk to her for hours, but you know you want to give her that false time constraint. And then at least you know she's going to pick up when you call rather than just calling her and hoping that she picks up because then she doesn't pick up. Then it's like a little awkward because she feels bad. She's like, oh, shit. And then like, you know, you can just avoid that by just send it, setting it up with a few texts. And uh, the, can you comment on, uh, I found this to be very effective, is uh, voice text. Or uh, if you got the right voice and you got you know you got right tonality, I find it like girls comment compliment me on my voice text all the time. Voice memos are great. Uh, they're my favorite thing. They're a nice little in between between texting and phone calls. Uh, yeah, I use voice memos all the time. I think they're great. Yeah, you can and you can do it on Bumble. You can't do it on Tinder, but on Bumble you can send those initial voice messages. And um, if you get, and if you know how to do that, I think that's awesome. Uh, I, w- I wish Tinder had it. So. Yeah, a lot, a lot of guys won't do that. A lot of guys are, like, too afraid. So you do kind of stand out if you can leave a solid voice message. Yeah, yeah. And then girls get nervous about sending them back. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. But she'll type you, like, an essay, right? So you can get a lot yeah. more investment. You send her a 10-second voice memo, she'll write you back, like, two paragraphs. Yeah, and I've asked them, say, send me a voice I'm shy. <laughs> I'm yeah. nervous. It's awesome. Okay. Um, 
Do you immediately, uh, let me make that bigger. Do you immediately continue the same amount of sexual tension you had over text when you meet up or do you have to build it up again slowly? Hair really, hair. really, really depends on her vibe. So, um, for example, let's say you meet up with a girl and, you know, she was like a lot of girls, they, you know, they talk a big game over text, like a lot of people in general. And when they meet you, they're really nervous. So you can't continue that same level of tension when that person's like super nervous, right? Because they'll just like break and they'll like fucking, you know, shut down. So I try to read her body language. If she is nervous, then I'll drop it down, you know, I'll do some comfort and then I'll amp it up. But if I sense that, you know, she just doesn't give a shit, she's just horny and DTF, then yeah, I'll just continue right where we started. So yeah, it's, I, it's, it totally depends on the girl, basically. I think you just nailed something that a lot of guys don't get. A lot of girls, when they first meet you, are nervous, super nervous, and they have a lot of walls and a lot of like, oh, I'm pulled back and darting or looking at their phone. And a lot of times she's just nervous. And if you match that energy and start doing the same thing, it's that, you know, coming, creating an open space for her to relax into is really important so that you can get beyond that nervousness. And, um, and did you want to comment on that? You kind of already did, but I think it's... Yeah, I well, it's actually, I'd like to share a little story that kind of cemented this for me. It was a few years ago, actually. Uh, I mean, I already knew about this, but this I think the story really cemented it. I was in Poland, and uh, this one chick, like, she was talking a big game over text. She was like, you know, she's like, oh, yeah, I can't wait till you fuck the shit out of me. Like, she's, like, super, super explicitly sexual, right? Like, very big game. So, you know, I just assumed that is like she's going to come over. It's going to be on. I was also kind of sloppy because I was like hooking up with a lot of girls. So I wasn't like really I underslept. I guess I'm just making excuses now, but whatever. So I meet up with this girl and I do actually kind of pick up where I left off over text. And I just didn't really read that she was super nervous and she just pulls back hard, like really hard. So, and then to get back to even a baseline, it took like half an hour. So it's, it's like, yeah, like if the girl's super nervous, just coming in hot like that, that'll make her pull back even more, right? Versus if you just kind of match her energy level a little bit lower, and then you can get back to here much faster than if you start off here. So I kind of, you know, learned that lesson firsthand multiple times. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's super important uh, with everybody, actually, even in sales, business, all kinds of stuff. Um, okay, let's uh, let's do a couple more, and uh, but we've been going quite a while, so we'll, yeah, we're at an hour and a half, so we'll do we'll just a couple quick questions, and then we'll probably call it a day. This has cool. been awesome. Um, yeah, likewise. What do you do when texting to bouncing between these qualities that Brian teaches, being authentic, playful, vulnerable, grounded, and building sexual tension? Does that sound right? Uh, yeah. So, okay, let's take a look at them one at a time. Authentic. Yes, you should definitely be authentic if you're putting on act. You might be able to pull it off over text, but you probably won't pull it off in person, right? Because you, I keep in mind, you still have to meet up with a girl in real life. So if you're, you know, let's say you're like a very inexperienced guy and you're pretending to be like a Dom BDSM master, you might be able to pull it off over text if you're really good, but you're not going to put it off, pull it off uh, in real life. So authentic, yes. Playful, yes. Vulnerable, yes. But again, we have to be clear about what vulnerable is. Vulnerable is not just sharing random facts about yourself that you think make you vulnerable. It's, you know, it has to be situational. Grounded, of course, building sexual tension, of course. So, yeah, all these uh, all these sound right. Now, the question is, how do you bounce back between them? That's a, that's a, that's a good question. Um, because you don't what you don't want to do is over confuse yourself. Like, oh, shit, you know, in this text, am I being, you know, authentic and playful? You know, you can, I can see how for a beginner or intermediate, this can actually confuse the fuck out of them. Um, so I think you have to look at more rather than each text the theme of the whole conversation rather than just like each text at a time. So I think maybe this is something that you should evaluate like the conversation, maybe after like, you know, a few screenshots worth of combo and then you evaluate it. Right. But I don't think you should be like micromanaging each text and looking at all of that. When, when, when I'm just sending a text, I'm just looking simply like, does this move me closer to my goal? My goal is getting the meet up with good logistics. Right. And if it is, then it's a good text to send. Right. So, that's like a very oversimplistic way of looking at it. Well, I do, I do agree that these are all things to look at. But if you start looking at it in terms of every text you send, I do think you can drive yourself crazy, especially if you're a beginner. But you can't do all that in every text. You know, you have to, yeah, you have to be, um, you know, it almost has to become like basketball. If I was going to go learn to play basketball, I, there's lots of skills. You develop those skills and then you stop thinking about them. They become part of you. You yeah. start to feel what vulnerability feels like and you use it when the moment calls for it you start to feel what playful feels like you use it when the moment calls for it but 
when you looked at those early texts from the guys we, we pulled up originally, they were missing some of this in their texting, writing a big block of information that was more analytical and serious and void of a lot of this stuff. So, Yeah, specifically the ones that were missing were playful, uh, grounded, and sexual tension. You didn't see any element of either one of those three. Yeah, that big time. Okay. Do we have one more before we close out the day? Huh? No, I said two more earlier, so um, I want to honor what I said if we do. If we don't, that's okay. Unless Alex knows, knows anything about blocking Tinder, I don't even know anything about that. Yeah, a tad. It, it's tricky. So um, we do have an article on that, but there's it gets confusing because all these apps, they have different types of blocks. So sometimes they can block your pictures, actually, uh, or they can block your profile. They can block your IP address. So the safest, if you want to just, like, try to, you know, like just be as safe as possible. The best thing you can do is actually use a new phone. But if that's not an option, at the very least, use a new phone number, clear your cache, uh, take each one of your pictures and blow it up like times, you know, a thousand and put like a tiny little pixel in there or just cut it by like 1% so that even though it looks like the same picture from a uh, whatever, like it's technically a different photo, right? So the auto um, system doesn't pick up on it. Um, yeah, I mean, those, those, those will be, but if you can get a new phone, that's probably even better. <laughs> new Apple ID is good, but uh, you know the first step you would try just using Google Voice or something like that, creating a profile with that. Yeah, you, that will work actually like most of the time. And if that doesn't work, then you would you know, go to the other steps. Awesome. Um, okay, just glancing through here. Awesome. Most good having you, man. It's a pleasure. And remember, guys, Alex is going to be at the Integrated Man Summit coming up November third through the fourth. There's a link uh, in the uh, chat box. Definitely click on that. Check it out. We do have online tickets as well as live tickets. We're going to be doing it in a beautiful bungalow on the beach right by the pool uh, there at the, uh, well, I'm, I probably shouldn't just announce the hotel, uh, in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> in Miami. And uh, Alex will be speaking multiple days. I think we got you on there for three days. And uh, he's going to have a blast. This, this allows him to really go deep. Like the first day, he'll give a talk. And then as he gets to know you guys, talks to you after the talk for a bit, chats with you and stuff like that he can get a feel for what you want more of. And this allows you guys to get custom material that really relates to what you want. And if you decide to come out live and you want to be part of the VIP, uh, you get to meet with us uh, off camera, have a chat and really ask those deep questions you don't want anybody else to hear asked. And, uh, and that's awesome too. So I look forward to having Alex there. Um, and you guys are always asking these texting questions. So this is a great opportunity for you to develop a good text game. Um, we also are going to have Andrew Bustamante, the, the ex-spy, former spy, turned into a, a coach now. And he teaches all the spy techniques for how to get, a li uh, get ahead in life using uh, CIA techniques. So uh, that's, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then we got the whole fearless team there. They're going to be they're going to be moving around teaching all kinds of stuff, too. So uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, anything you want to add, Alex? No, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the CIA speech. Actually, one of the books that I read recently, which I found very interesting, is, uh, you know, that book that was written by that famous negotiator. The um, He was a famous FBI negotiator for 20 years, and he talks about how, like, negotiation. Yes, 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 Chris Foss, what? yeah. Chris Foss. I don't, I don't know. It sounds interesting, though. It's super interesting. So I'm looking forward. I think it sounds somewhat similar, so I'm looking forward to that speech because that book was really impactful. Yeah, that's uh, that he was interesting. Our first interview with with, uh, with Andrew was really fascinating. Um, he's an interesting guy. He's a, he's a great communicator, super interesting guy. We were talking about like uh, uh, different ways the CIA uses to uh, before they go out. Like one, one thing that I thought was interesting is like if I'm going to go out to a bar tonight and I wanted to and there was somebody in there I needed to get to know. Um, but or if I just wanted to meet girls, he says I would. Before I went out, I take a piece of paper and write down everything that's interesting that I, you know, emotionally interesting about the bar, the area, things going on, people, things that I have from the past that have happened to me there, stories. And I'd make a list a mile long. I don't necessarily need to know it all inside out, but what I do is just bring it to the forefront of your brain like an hour before you go out. Mm. And then, then when you're out there, all these these things you know about the space, the place, the street, the town, all just come up and you start talking to people and the stuff just pops pop into the front of their brains. They says, we'll do that days ahead of time. We're case in a place. We'll, we'll have so much information when we walk in there. We'll have top, all kinds of topics galore to talk about, socialize about, connect on. And it's really weird. I thought it's an interesting way to look at it. 
if I was just going down to the local bar called the Brig, I might just write down 10 things I remember that I've been there before, stories, history, jazz band, the time that the owner did this, blah, 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 blah. And then walk in there and I'm, my brain's fresh and ready to go. I thought yeah. that was interesting. Yeah, I think it's interesting because the stuff that we do, which some guys think is like pretty hard and difficult, is actually a cakewalk in some ways compared to what those guys do. Because like, think about the stakes, right? Like, if I'm talking to a girl, you know, I fuck it up. Okay, whatever. If you're like an undercover CIA agent, you fuck it up, you're dead, right? So the stakes are yeah. higher. So, you know, your innate, you know, flight and flight, you know, response is going to be way higher. So it requires way more, you know, cognitive control to bring that down. Because, you, you know, if you're nervous in front of a girl, you don't get the girl. If you're nervous in front of that cartel member, you know, you could get shot in the head, right? So, but then like, oh, shit, I can't be nervous. So I, I'm very fascinated by that stuff. Like, I think like, you know, it's like much more. I, was, I wonder though, stuff. like if the guys that were going out to meet girls had that much pressure, boy, they would get better with women fast. <laughs> they would either be dead or better with women really fast. I bet a lot of them that take years in months would do what they take years to do because they would be so fucking committed. You know, there, there'd be no one foot in, one foot out hesitation shit going on. And there, I think there's some element of truth there. Like I remember when I was doing sales, I got way better at social interaction a lot faster than when I was with chicks because if I didn't sell, I didn't, you know, Make, you know, get my paycheck, which meant that I couldn't pay my rent, right? So the stakes were a lot higher. And so my skills did improve a lot faster. So I do think there's an element of truth there. Like the more you have on the line, the more you're probably going to like hustle. That's it. Fun. That's it, guys. So you're going to all take your paychecks, give them to me and Alex, and then we'll pay, <laughs> you, we'll pay you back with each girl you meet. So, uh, you know, and, and you have to earn it back throughout the week. Otherwise, you can't pay rent. Sounds no, like a good deal. It's kind of funny, but there's actually that's actually a good, uh, somewhat good advice. Like me and my friends used to do that. We give, uh, we'd be like, okay, listen, here's a hundred bucks, and if you, uh, you know, to get your money, you'd have to like, you know, whatever. I think the rule we had was if you don't approach the girl that your buddy points out in the first five seconds, you lose like twenty bucks that's or fifty good. bucks or something. Well, that that gives you that extra incentive, which is good if you're like a beginner or intermediate. I did that. I mean, I did something similar one day. That's a little different. I like what you did there, but I just gave a, uh, I think it was a hundred bucks to a buddy. And I said, for each approach I do today, direct approach, give me 20 back or, and, uh, and, uh, but yeah, I like that you said within five seconds, that's actually really good. They, they point them out five seconds go. And, uh, maybe I'll up the ante. Do we, we do a, make it a hundred bucks a girl. Stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's a certain money point at which you're going to approach like yeah. it depends on how rich you are but there's there's a certain price at which all your anxiety and your fear is going to go away and you're going to approach that girl like everyone yeah. has that amount like for me it'd probably be you know a few hundred but like you know for guys who are more broke it'd be like 20 bucks but every guy has that amount of money where i don't care how nervous you are how much you know asd you have you'll still approach that girl i'm not asd uh fucking approach anxiety you'll still approach that girl because the stakes are just so high and then, then this one element we would talk about adding to it is um, at the end of the day, if I haven't done it, I haven't earned my money back, then your job is to donate it to uh, organization or charity I hate. Oh, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> sure. awesome. So if you're, if you're Democrat, Republican, you're Republican, Democrat, something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and yeah, that is, it's all that, that pain, that pain is a powerful motivator, man. Right. So anyway, and you uh, donate in that person's name. So that organization sends you like daily fucking newsletter, emails oh, like, oh, you're supporting, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Write yeah, your name on some wall somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that would be perfect. Okay, man. Uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Should I'm not supposed to hit this table. We'll be seeing you soon in uh, in Miami, November 4th to the 5th, uh, 4th, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 4th, 6th. I can't even remember now, 4th, 5th, 6th. But you guys, you guys saw the link in there. Check it out. Like I said, if you're watching this on YouTube at a later date, make sure to like, subscribe, make sure to comment. Definitely put some comments in there. We're constantly checking the comments and bringing you more content based on those comments. And plus, it helps us to grow the channel. Make sure to share because that also helps us to grow the channel. And as it grows, we're going to bring you more, even better content and more content. Make sure to check out Alex's con channel, uh, which uh, your channel is Playing With Fire, right? Or Playing Fire? Yeah, Playing with Fire. You, you'll search there, come up, Playing With Fire Dating. We are temporarily, uh, we got we can't post for a week. We got a YouTube long story, but we got, yeah. So if you don't see any videos for us for a few days, it doesn't mean that we're like, stop posting. We're going to be back at it on Friday. But yeah, there's more than enough old content to keep you entertained until then. Yeah, and then uh, anything else you want to mention about your stuff, uh, website or anything? I mean, playingfire.com, you know, we pretty much whatever, whether you prefer to read, listen, watch, we have a platform that will appeal to you. So, you know, we have more than enough, like, free content to, you know, keep you guys entertained for a while. 
Um, I'm always impressed when someone's like, you know what? I've gone through every single piece of material you have. I'm like, damn, dude, you must have taken a lot of time to that. So, yeah, we have a lot of good stuff. So check it out. You know, hopefully it helps. Awesome. Well, that's that's pretty much it then. Um, thank you for for being out here, and we'll see you all soon in Miami. And remember, only the confident really live. Take care. Take care, guys.